Last time on Skint, big issue seller Vernon Burgess was beginning to feel the pinch. I've got muscle, but I used to be a lot of fat up. A lack of cash was having a big impact on his home life. Seven nights a week, but I can't get the stones out of them because I kind of feel like bastard washing powder off the time. Vernon lives in Birmingham, just one of seven million people who exist in Britain's cash economy. Refused credit by banks and building societies, they're skint. <laughs> Vernon's been in and out of psychiatric hospitals. He's dependent on his disability living allowance to support him and his son. The money's run out, but the bills keep coming. I've got this bloody... Uh, I've actually paid my TV licence, which I paid, like, five and seven pound a week, as much as I could, and I've paid for a TV licence last year and this year until December or something. Now, they actually want next year's money for the next year's TV licence. £124. It's not nice getting all those bills, and now there's more bills, that's not all. I've got another bill saying £124, 18 pence, and the other letters then saying they're going to disconnect me and take me to court. This one is £846, 78 pence. How much all in all do you think at the moment you actually owe? In debt? Mm. 3000 or something like that. Happy birthday to Over at the Griffin household, it's party time. Happy birthday, dear Dad. With Tom out of work and Tara expecting another child, Declan's fifth birthday is an expensive business. Oh, make one. Go out and get drunk. Go out and get drunk. Get plastered, you bastard. Go out and get drunk. Never mind how much I've spent, that's neither here nor there. All right? Thank you, Robert. <laughs> They've bought Declan some flashy skates. Oh, you got a red suit on. As it turned out, it was owed some money. Yeah, and right? the money comes. And the money comes. And that's a good thing as well. I was able to sell something that I didn't need, right? Make a few more above there and work a little deal and make some money there. So there's more than one way to skin a cat, and that's the best you're getting out of me. All right? Meet the O'Hares, Birmingham's answer to the Von Trapp family. One, two, three. and Len are always trying to fund their children's showbiz ambitions. I love it when lads dance. I think it's great. It's good for their confidence and what have you. It keeps them fit as well. They're constantly performing around Birmingham. And their eldest daughter, Amy, is already a stage veteran with another big show coming up. Just My first pantomime, she went 11 times. I did. It was, it was just absolutely fantastic. It's just, and to see your child on that stage, it's, it's just like, it's better than a lottery. We... Oh, <laughs> with the Bromley accent. <laughs> yeah, that's the family one <laughs> <run> trap tune. <laughs> Across town, in store direct is part of a growing industry of modern day pawn shops. In exchange for cash, Mary, the manager, will take your goods on a 28-day buyback scheme. I can't this any further than Upstairs, there's an Aladdin's cave of goods waiting for their owners to claim them back. This is the area where we keep all the buybacks, customers' items that come through, um, and this is where they're stored for 28 days. This is an area just for, like, games consoles, PS2s, uh, Xboxes. That, in fact, um, belongs to one of my regulars, um, Vernon Burgess, who I give uh, £60 on buyback, and it's 
going to cost him £78 to get back. And obviously if he wants to renew it, it's going to cost him £18. So maybe that might be here for quite a while. We, we do see, I mean, the regular customers bring the same items in all the time. And uh, we don't really want to see him lose it. But if that's the case and he can't afford it, then obviously he's going to lose the item. And it'll go on the shop floor for sale. Appearance is everything in the O'Hare household. I only just got these cups. Look, a shower for boys Look, and girls. Got them for four pounds from the car. Julie's playing the part of family barber. They were all new. A shower for the old boys. It's all itchy, doesn't it? I think it's around about um, five or six quid, isn't it, to go to the hairdressers now for a, for a cut. So, I mean, these was four pounds, so these will I'll definitely get me money's worth out of these. Need to move back a bit, Jones. Oh, huh? let me. Need to move back a bit, so. Here we go. Ah. 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 Is that better? These are absolute crap. Ah. No. Look I don't know why they're not working. Lee? Yeah? Do you know where the other cutters are? They don't cut. <laughs> I'll take them back. <laughs> you know that bloke on the car boot? Yes. Put the uh, attachments on. So, you know, you put the attachments on. And then you just, uh, you know, shave it like that. And I, I got the attachments on and I just skinned it off, all of it. it took me about five minutes. I hold that because it wasn't working, you know. But that, that's, that's really good for a haircut cost you at least a fiver. So I won't have to pay for haircuts. I've got trimmers. Vernon gets his benefits tomorrow. They're paid straight into his bank account. These types of accounts don't give any credit, but Vernon's desperate. So, Vern, what's going on then? Oh, well, I asked the bank would they give me £100 or something, or even 50 or 20 or something, because my money clears. At 6 o'clock in the morning, I'll get my disability money. I was awarded for life and my weekly money. So there's, like, £400 in the morning. But we haven't got... The electric went that the other night. And I ain't got nothing to die at all, really. I thought they could probably give me something, you know, and they couldn't give me nothing. I think you're not selling the big issue today. No, because I haven't got any money for magazines. I've got about one pound twenty on mine. There's yet another birthday on the horizon for Tom and Tara. More money for another present. This time for their eldest, Kieran. You had a great time on that. Yeah, well, look at that big wheel, man. You had a great time on that, even. <laughs> How much is it? I don't know. Yeah. Eight or nine, like nine. <coughs> Tara's not having it. Because this is the first shop I've walked into since I got off the bus. And I don't want to just go and spend that much money on something like that. See something up the road I might want. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to just jump on it straight away. Vernon's got his benefits. £400 to last two weeks. But his priority is to get back the possessions he's pawned. I've got to get his Xbox out, 100. Two gold rings that run out in three days, 110, that's 200. Renew the CD rights, that's 200 and something. I owe 100 out altogether, 300 and something. About 40 quid left to do the shopping. Good morning, there. Good morning. So no yeah. You're extending this one, sweetie. Is that yeah? the Xbox? No, this is, you're getting the Xbox out. Yeah. Oh, sorry. He's handing over £78 to buy back his son's games console. But he's got no intention of taking it home. Are you going to sell it? Probably. No, not sell it, you know, pawn it somewhere. Five, two, six, seven, one. He's sort of talking about going and pawning it straight back again. You see? Well, what's the point in, in doing that? There's no point. Because what he could have done is renewed it for £18. 
it can it can still renew it because it's not due out. So it's going to be pointless uh, giving me £78 to get it back and go and pawn in it somewhere else. That's, that's a pointless exercise. Obviously hasn't thought about what he's doing today. He's, he's coming. Uh, something's upset him. He's really a bit nervous today, a bit on edge. So something's really upset him. And I, I, don't re I really don't think he's uh, thinking about it. Well, let me just ask him. Oh, thanks a lot, man. All right, Vernon. Vernon, off. sweetheart, are you, do you want to? Did you want to renew this one, or do you want to? Or do you want to get it back out? Get it back out. You, okay, so you're not going to go and pawn it somewhere no. else, because otherwise you're losing money. I'm only for pawn it somewhere else. Oh, so that I could actually. Uh, you could have actually renewed this for yeah. eighteen pounds. I don't want you losing out I don't money. I what See, what you're doing is you're... I'm a bit better off in him, innit, aren't I? I'm giving well, him the money, I thought, yeah. I'm just thinking about you, mate, yeah, because you're... Yeah, you're right, you're... Love, you're right. I didn't know, no, you're right now. That's why I need a bit of money, actually, now. So I'm going to put it back on for you okay, now. OK, thanks okay, a lot, mate. So, and then put the money to the side for your lad. If you yeah. want to get trainers yeah. and things. Don't go spending it no, today. No, no. Right, 20, 40, 60. All right, then, mate. OK, see you later, mate. OK, I'll see you later. Thank you. See... It's a tough world. It's a tough world, Marty. You know. It's evil, wicked. You know. It shouldn't have to be like this, really. It shouldn't have to be like this. But I want to live in a perfect world. Um, and if I can help just a little bit, or help somebody just a little bit, you know, I think I've done my job well. Bob Steele is another one of Mary's regulars. Uh, with milk, eggs, and lo and behold, sweet corn. Uh, what I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do with that. Scrambled egg and sweet corn, I suppose. <laughs> he normally survives by busking, but his amp's broken and he can't afford a replacement. What, what's the finances at the moment? I've got one penny to me name at the present moment. So, and I can't do any busking, of course, because the amp's still kaput, so even with... Uh, I'd hope to be able to go and do a bit of busking with the uh, toy piano, um, on the basis that at least I might take a fiver or a tenner, you know. Um, but with, without the amp, it's impossible. Because of the uncertainty of the future, I, I've got to try and make it certain, one way or the other. Things are bad, but never hopeless. Len O'Hare hasn't worked for over 20 years, so feeding a large family isn't easy. didn't do all the activities they do. Then the kids do the activities that cost money, so you have to sort of find where you can take it from one source. So you, like, you, you do cut down on the food. Next up, the pawnbrokers. £30. I just want to put two bracelets in. I'm looking at about £35. I can get that, around about that on two bracelets. Um, um, it covers the dancing, really. It covers, that, covers it? the dancing, yeah. Um, so I do that, and then... It's just if I need an extra little bit of cash, I'll come in. Oh, that's lovely. 39. That's great. That's lovely. Name. That's our netball. Lovely. Money. Like, this week we had the uh, telephone bill come in. So the telephone bill was £60. So, like, next month I might not have a big bill in. So, therefore, I can get this out. So it's just... It's robbing Peter to pay Paul, basically, and then paying Peter back. £39. Pounds. That's lovely. Ta-da, Thank... my love. Bob's back on his feet. It's actually got an audience. And it's all thanks to Mary. I had a visit from Bob earlier, uh, about an hour ago, hour and a half ago. Um, but he wanted to uh, just loan an amp. 
because uh, he's absolutely skint. He's really hungry. He's got nothing at all. So I said, yeah, that's fine. I've just borrowed him an amp. Um, and he's giving it a go today. So hopefully he's going to earn himself some money just to get a sandwich or something, you know. So he hasn't eaten for a couple of days. It's the first time that I've, I've actually seen him busking. Um, and he's right outside the shop as well. So, yeah, yeah. He's pretty good. He's not bad. He's not bad. Amy, do you want some um, radishes? <sighs> She's at the motor show today, so I'm really looking forward to it. Basically, we're, uh, we're all going off for the day to go and watch Amy perform in the arena, so I'm really excited. You know what I can do? Before Julie met Len, life was even tougher. Never, ever had any money. Shoplifting at one time, just to put food on the table for the kids. And I look back at them years and I think, oh, I don't know how I got through that. You know, um, pretty some really, really scary times. I've had um, hammers to me and I've been chased, chased with hammers. I've climbed out the windows. I've gone through some pretty horrendous stuff. And that's why I like my kids to appreciate what they've got. Well, it's doing good, yeah. That's good. For an hour's work. Well, it's a bit longer than that. An hour and a half, yeah. Half, yeah. It's not bad. But, you know, that's nothing. So, I'm, I'm into the rental business now, then. It just costs, it costs 15 quid for an hour and a half, the amp. Oh, I see. Is that yeah. all right? Right. <laughs> so, so, send me an invoice and you can join the queue, you know. I appreciate no, that, good, Mary, yeah. actually, yeah. for coming out. Absolutely, yeah. Please don't. John Mambo. Where are we? That's fresh meat. I'll get these. Move everything again. Not too bad. While I'm here, I'll get a couple of those. And it's just sage and onion stuffing. If you mix those with mashed potato and a little bit of anything else that's going left over, you'd better call beef or something like that, and you've got a, a full dinner, uh, effectively. Just put the lot in the oven and let it, let it cook through, and uh, you're in. How much did that cost? Well, that wasn't bad at all. Um, 11.40. Something wrong with the Oreo and it keeps tripping this week. Hang on. Is it back on? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. No. no. Is it on now? No. Len, will you come and have a look at this, love? That's the fuse has gone. Hello, right. I've got half an hour until I've got to go I actually leave the shop. I don't know where the jeans up shop, but pop nice jean. When ask Jean if Jean will line your trousers for you, I'm sure she will. It's only me, Jean. Hello, darling. What would you give? Do me a favour. Can you put the, the iron over them jeans and that? Yeah. Will you? And I'll come round for you. You don't mind? Yeah. Thank you. I'll see you in a bit. Thanks, darling. We've got brilliant neighbours, you know. The Griffins have had a windfall. <laughs> I've just got my maternity money through and basically got the push chair. <coughs> every single mother gets it. Every, every mother in the country gets it now, I think. Uh, it's £500 for you to go out and get your basics for the baby. Yeah. Little hats and mittens. If it was a girl, would it still be getting this? Uh... Two rods. Doesn't matter. It's only a child. No one really looks at what a child's wearing these days. Most of the clothes are unisex anyway. Unless you put a dress on a boy, that's a big death. You know, but if David Beckham can go around wearing a sarong, why can't the boys wear dresses? I bought a beanbag because I like the baby to be in a beanbag. You can literally, like, you know, when you've had enough of them doing your heading, you can literally pick them up and go, done, stay in the beanbag, and <laughs> throw the baby in the beanbag. And they're just flopping into it. And they're like, they're so comfortable. 
It's lovely. We've done it with all of them. Do you worry about the, the baby coming financially? No, not really. No. We'll get by by hook or by crook. <laughs> it's just as easy to feed another one as what it is. The many we got. Food. I reckon the whole thing's probably going to cost me something in the region of about 50 pence, or maybe just under. But at the end of the day, it does, do, does fill up a hole. What you do is stuff the potatoes and the stuffing into a bowl, add the corned beef. If we mash all this lot in, a bit more of that. This is quite a handy little recipe because it's 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 tasty, and you can deep fry it as well. You can. Once you've done it, roll it into balls, flour it, and dip it in butter. All right, stop. And but uh, Tara's off for an antenatal. You've heard it before, thank you, Kat. There's only two months until the new Griffin will be keeping everyone busy. With a few quid remaining from the maternity grant, Tom can now buy his eldest son's present. OK. OK, what we do, just take a ticket. If you just take this to the cashier. Yeah. Oh, no problem. Okay. Thanks very much. Looking forward to it, really, am. Eh? Yeah. Changing nappies, not a problem. My shit smells worse than the babies. You know, so... Nice and regular. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Yep, brilliant. Just hurry up and have the baby so I can be part of it. You know, and she can have a rest and great with her mates and nightclub and do whatever she wants. Doesn't bother me. He's also bought Tara a little treat. How much did you say? Six ninety nine, love. That's my little contribution for the baby. You're right. <laughs> You're a joke. <laughs> I'm shitting myself this time. I'll be honest. You <laughs> ain't being rude <laughs> because you remember. You don't remember the pain. I mean, once you've had a baby, when you've had a baby, it's like <laughs> it's there now, isn't it? You've, the pain's gone. But actually, like five years now, I remember that pain. <laughs> and I know it's going to hurt, do you know what I mean? So, you know, when it goes into labour <coughs> and that pain comes, it's like, oh, it's worse than a tough ache. At the International Motor Show, the O'Hare's bus has arrived. But for Julie, the cars aren't the stars. Amy's performance is just minutes away. Happy with it to be quite honest. 89.99, a bargain. It's going to be worse next year, though, isn't it? When I had the baby. 
It'll never stop. Amy's big moment has arrived. Vernon's day hasn't been so happy. His 400 pounds of benefits have almost gone, and there's still more to pay. I've got to get this jewellery out, mate. I think I'll add two or three dies left. But I think I don't know how much I gave him. It's 110 to get out, so they must have given me about 80 pound on. But loose they're not lost. I thought I've got to give 110. She said there's 44 odd pound of interest. Ah, oh, I had to give 160 quid. Never mind. Let's see what I've got left in my pocket. Like, it was a shock. 160, 20, 50. That's what I've got left, a bit of change. I had a 300 and something quid. 50 quid, I'm skinned, I've got no shopping in. The electric's going to go today. So I've got to get shopping and electric. I'd be better off doing like the rest of them do, shoplifters and all fucking shoplifters in Erdington. They do a lot better than me. But like, if I was a shoplifter, I'd, I'd probably have a washing machine and wouldn't have all this fucking starvation bit. Because I'm telling you, even though I'm on dirt lie, it's not enough to live on. You know, man, it's not enough to it's enough to survive on. You can blow it on food if you want and have fucking jack, or try and invest it somehow to try and make it into a bit more. So you have got enough. Because you know, you, when you've got a young son, ten, you've got to fucking provide somehow. All Vernon's efforts to support himself and his son have failed. Days later. Police were called to deal with a disturbance. Vernon was detained in a psychiatric unit. His son went to stay with relatives. I've had a call from the hospital um, concerning Vernon Burgess. Um, he's been taken into hospital, he's not very well. Um, and he's very concerned about his son's Xbox, um, which is, it is overdue, it is about to be pulled and to put on, on the shop floor for sale. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep it downstairs somewhere. I'm not going to put it on the shop floor. I'm going to keep it safe for him um, until he gets better and comes in. You know, I think it'd be un unfair of me to put it on the shop floor knowing that he's in hospital and he can't get in. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep it for him. Yeah. Next time on Skint. I need a bloody car. Bob Steele loses his wheel. How the hell do I move this lot? Smack me head. And Martin McKechnie takes his family away for their first ever holiday. I've charged my family. Send a drugstore change. What's wrong with it? That's a nice one, ain't it? Yeah. <laughs>